The Anti-Counterfeit Authority today joined the rest of the world in commemoration of the World Anti-Counterfeit Day. The Anti-Counterfeit Authority, ACA, is mandated by Kenyan law to collaborate with other organizations in the fight against counterfeit trade in the country. Equally, ACA has organized its first international symposium on IP protection that and enforcement rather that is said to be held on the 13th all the way to the 15th of june 2023 we're now joined by usman yusuf who's the director of enforcement services at the anti-counterfeit authority to shed more light on the symposium but equally just get a status update on the report or progress report on the fight against counterfeit an IP threat in the country. Usman, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Karibu sana. Pleasure to, so, to meet you, Bano Huston, and uh, I'm glad to be on this platform to share with the country and also the public on the status of counterfeit in the country. And I'm pretty okay. sure it's an important day, especially in your calendar as we're yeah. marking, you know, the World Anti-Counterfeit Day. Yes. L let's start with a status update on the progress so far in the fight against counterfeit in the country are we winning the fight against anti uh, against counterfeit goods and ip theft in the country uh, definitely we uh, as an institution or uh, as a an organization we are there to win uh, despite the challenges that are there uh, i can assure you that uh, we are uh, doing progressively very well in terms of countering counterfeit in the country uh, from the time when the authority was uh, inaugurated or in the inception of the organization in 2010, up to date, we have tremendous changes in terms of the manner in which counterfeiting uh, activities is taking place in Kenya. And uh, we have to also come to terms that uh, initially when uh, the authority is formed, there was a lot of dumping of uh, counterfeit goods uh, and uh, there was no proper organization that uh, was uh, there to tackle the issue of counterfeit. So I think uh, the authority is in a better place and it is very unique in that uh, in the whole of Africa uh, and the counterfeit authority is, is a standalone organization in Kenya and uh, this is a stride in terms of ensuring that we win counterfeiting in the country. Uh, to give uh, at least a preview mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the data in terms of uh, what was happening in fighting counterfeit and at, in a broader sense illicit trade. Uh, the concept of uh, counterfeiting is about brand protection and it comes along with other categories of illicit trade where we come across substandard goods, we come across uncustom goods, we come across pirated. So uh, we are looking at uh, uh, a system where and the counterfeit will be a very uh, unique institution mm -hmm. to play a vital role to ensure that despite fighting counterfeit, we are also leveraging on fighting all other uh, illicit trades in partnership with the uh, relevant organizations. Okay. Yes. And uh, I mean, it's proper to note that ACA is doing a tremendous job in fighting counterfeit goods in the country. Yes. But w what we want to know is the extent of counterfeit goods in the country. Are there counterfeit goods as we speak? Because we well know that Kenya heavily imports goods, especially into the country. Yes. W what is the extent of counterfeit goods as we sit right now? Uh, uh, w w what I can say is that... Uh, the, there is an existence of counterfeit goods in the country. Okay. And uh, the volume have been tremendously reduced from the time when the organization was formed in 2010 mm -hmm. up to date. And I can assure you that uh, the trajectory in terms of the counterfeit goods in Kenya is not uh, as such when we started in 2010. Okay. And the figures is that uh, we are looking at a global figure of uh, 800 billion mm. uh, annually. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are looking forward to reducing that annual figure of 800 billion to a minimum of 400 billion. And that's a tremendous changes that we have done in terms of countering counterfeit. And at the same time, we have to acknowledge that uh, the existence of counterfeit in the country is not through only the legal uh, entry points. It is through porous borders that we are having. And uh, the manner in which 
we are not able to have a proper uh, way of dealing with those cross borders. So definitely I will acknowledge that there is an existence of counterfeit goods in the mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. uh, but the fight in which we have uh, uh, been, been enhancing is that we have done a lot of uh, complaints from IPR, that's intellectual property right owners. We have also encountered a lot of complaints from the consumers that we continuously attend to and we are saying that uh, uh, the authority is open to all the complaints from all the relevant stakeholders to ensure that they also join in terms of fighting counterfeit. And I've, uh, as uh, I've started saying, is that counterfeiting is a global issue. Yeah. It is not something that is won by one institution like the counterfeit authority. It is a partnership. And if we are all uh, join in terms of ensuring that you report any incident of counterfeit, any uh, item that you think is counterfeit, those are things that will add up to our data and also try to profile the relevant suspects to ensure that we diminish their sources and we also try to choke them from the basics. So I think we are up to the task okay. and we are able to give you a, a, a figure or a, a status that we are not badly off. We have a lot of changes. Uh, initially when we started, we found counterfeit in all the uh, outlets, but nowadays it is very rare. Even if it is there, it is done in a very secretive manner, in a manner that uh, it needs a lot of intelligence gathering for you to tackle it. So we are saying that the changes are there and uh, we are moving forward to ensure that we reduce in right. partnership with the public. Yes. So you definitely have your work cut out for you as an authority, yeah, definitely. but definitely it doesn't mean that, you know, it's just your uh, mandate, yes. even though the Kenyan law has given you that mandate, yes. it brings other stakeholders on board. Yes. But in terms of ACA yes. and your mandate in yes. terms of fighting counterfeit yes. and IP theft in the country, yes. please break it down for our audience in terms of uh, how you churn, uh, how you break it down, your job in terms of differentiating which goods are counterfeit, which ones are not. Uh, when it comes to IP theft in the country, how exactly do you ensure that that theft isn't prospering within our borders. Yeah, first of all, let me demystify the, the concept of counterfeiting. Mm -hmm. The concept of counterfeiting is uh, ownership of brands or products by manufacturers. Okay. So our first initial gateway is through interaction with the manufacturers themselves. So it's the manufacturers who come forward and uh, alert the institution that uh, my product mm -hmm is in the market without my authority. Mm -hmm. And it is from that angle that we as an uh, anti-counterfeit authority under the enforcement directorate, mm -hmm. we are enlightened uh, through product trainings. So that is one of the gateways that we normally uh, utilize to ensure that uh, we progressively uh, counter counterfeiting. Secondly, through the initiative of officers' knowledge, they try to ensure that they have a grasp of the existence of the product in the country. We categorize them in terms of uh, the, real, uh, the frequent counterfeited products. Mm -hmm. And we now try to profile uh, the product uh, in terms of uh, how we can be able to differentiate between the genuine and the counterfeit in partnership with the owners again. Because without the owners being on board, I think counterfeiting uh, cannot be uh, fought. Sure. So the brand owners are the ones who will come and say, this is my product mm -hmm. and this is how I protect it in terms of the security features. Okay. So that when we uh, detain or seize the goods, we are able to enlighten the public. And at the same time, when we take a matter to court, we are able to demonstrate that this one is genuine and this is counterfeit. So the premises of counterfeiting rely heavily on the brand owner's uh, information okay yes uh, well noted uh, definitely uh, broken down the process yes. but equally we understand in terms of intellectual property rights yes uh, there's a process in terms of the recordation yes uh, kindly break it down for us especially for those who might be concerned around IP rights yeah thank yeah. you very much I think uh, uh, these are some of the innovative ways that uh, the authority is trying to counter or counterfeiting in the country. Mm -hmm. Recordation, uh, I per se, is one that we are proud of, first of all, to initiate and to say that uh, we are using that platform to ensure that goods from outside will not be coming to the country mm -hmm. without uh, the authority of, of, the, of the organization. In, in the sense that recordation is in two parts. One is 
when the IPR owners record their particulars with the organization, mm -hmm. meaning that they will be able to give us their uh, IPR rights, they are able to deposit their particulars, and also to give us the insight on how we are able to differentiate. So we use that data as an intelligence uh, data frame so that we can be able to uh, detect mm -hmm. whatever is coming in. Uh, we are also trying to use that data to ensure that uh, all the products that are within the country that is coming in from outside can be profiled in relation to the data that we have in order to deter them not to come to the country. Secondly, the, we have what we call the input module. The input module is if the IPR owner's data is not with us, whoever will be coming in with, the, with this product will be able to declare and say that I am coming in with this product and uh, this is the particulars, uh, this is the trademark, the brand name, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that uh, the officers can be able to look at it in relation to the data that we have and say, is this product owned by anybody that is within our data? If not, then we are able to liaise with international partnership. If somebody is bringing in a product that is, we are having an IPR on board, we contact the IPR contact and say that we are having this product brought in by so and so, can we give us an insight whether to it's counterfeit or we have authorized it? Okay. So that is a, a, a way that this country will, uh, will get itself to free themselves from the issue of counterfeiting. Okay. And we are in control of the whole system of importation and also whatever is coming into the country. And we can give a verdict in terms of whether it is genuine or counterfeit. And as I've said, it is the backbone is the IPR owners. Okay. Yes, and we're having this conversation at a very touchy time in the country. Yes. And I'm sure you're following up on the conversation around the finance bill 2023, yes. an increase in taxes here and there. Mm. And my question to you is the increment in tax a recipe for an increment in counterfeit goods in the country? Because one might generally assume, you know. Uh, I, I think there is no relationship between the taxes and the issue of counterfeiting. Okay. There is no, purely there is no relationship. In the sense that uh, uh, with us, we want to see ourselves in a position where we protect our country and also our public mm -hmm. from any uh, adverse effect of counterfeit. One, uh, the, one of the adverse effects uh, of counterfeiting is also revenue, revenue loss. Because if somebody is bringing in a counterfeit product, it is not a value that is required uh, against the genuine one. So if you are bringing in, for example, uh, ball pens, uh, and uh, the manufacturers or the distributors here are selling at 50 shillings, and you are bringing it at 5 shillings, the revenue loss in terms of you bringing in will be very huge. Yeah. And the person who is an IPR owner will be disadvantaged. So we want to look at it in, that, in terms of revenue loss. Secondly, we also look at whether that uh, product that is brought in as counterfeit uh, uh, reach the standard. Because yeah. definitely, from the point of standard, it might or it might not. But from the manufacturer standard, once he's not the person who has manufactured, it doesn't qualify to be within his quality control system. Mm. So definitely, we are looking at uh, how can we harmonize the issue of quality, of counterfeit uh, being brought in, and the manufacturer himself. So we are not allowing anybody to bring in something, a, a competition that is not worth. Okay. So if somebody wants to bring in product, mm -hmm. let him also brand, let him also establish himself, create employment, and uh, create a platform where we Kenyans benefit from uh, from the imports, rather than uh, somebody uh, benefits alone, he evades taxes, and uh, it, it's a criminal uh, issue. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I think we are looking at it in a sense that we are trying to uh, 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 make ourselves uh, an organization that is a buffer zone between the manufacturers and the public, mm. uh, so that we don't want any middle uh, middlemen who are bringing in products to take advantage of the manufacturers and at the same time the consumers. Uh, that's deceiving the consumers that this is uh, brought in by so and so when it is not. Okay. So that is the point. And since you might have data, just briefly on this, what's the most counterfeited product in the country right now and why? Uh, the most uh, counterfeited product is uh, electronics, electronics and mobile uh, accessories mm -hmm. in the sense that it's a fast moving product. Yeah, yeah. And uh, counterfeiters are very clever. They are always ahead of 
uh, an institution. They are always very clever. So what they do is that they look at something that is a quick sell mm -hmm. in terms of uh, sales so that you will not get them uh, in possession of the goods. So sometimes even they bring in when they already have orders. So they bring in a container and they, within a second it has been distributed. It is fragmented. Okay. So even countering them will be an uphill task. But what we are saying is that the most frequently counterfeited product at the moment is the mobile and electronics. All right. uh, electrical and electronics appliances. Uh, footwear and clothing also comes in handy. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, uh, pharmaceutical products, which is also part of uh, counterfeited items. We, we also have alcohol, is also one of the major menace in terms of counterfeiting locally and also from uh, outside. So I think those are items that we are looking at in terms of ensuring that the people are getting value for their money and they're getting the genuine products. Okay, as we move on and perhaps as you equally hint on what to expect from the symposium yes. that is said to be held next week as you're partnering with various stakeholders within that particular sector, yes. kindly break it down for us in terms of how exactly ACA is addressing, you know, those multiple and growing challenges posed by counterfeiting and illicit trade in the country. Uh, I, I think uh, counterfeit uh, authority is uh, in the right place by ensuring that uh, we partner with our uh, regional uh, blocks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, we're also looking forward to partner with international partners, which we are they're also uh, on board. This is a, a process of creating awareness across the board okay. and ensuring that we share experiences. Mm -hmm. What is the experiences of anti counterfeit authority in combating counterfeit? What are the challenges that we have faced and how best we can be able to borrow from others uh, who have maybe encountered the same challenges and also fostering relationship and intelligence gathering. Uh, intelligence uh, sharing is one of the key uh, platform that we want to use in terms of across the globe. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to sh have to share information and also share intelligence with World uh, Customs Organization. We want to share with uh, uh, other relevant uh, bodies, Interpol. We want to share information with all other people that are in partnership with uh, fighting counterfeit. So I think uh, the symposium is a platform that we want to use to commemorate the World and the Counterfeit Day, which starts from 8th. And uh, we want to commemorate uh, it uh, through the International Symposium from 13th to 15th. Uh, and the objective of uh, that uh, symposium is uh, mainly to look at how best we can also uh, inculcate the aspect of innovation within the country. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the innovation index across the globe, Kenya is a bit low in terms of innovation index. And this is particularly where we want to say that we want to weed off ourselves from the uh, mentality of importation of all sorts of items rather than trying to create a platform to be somebody who will be able to manufacture goods mm -hmm. within this country rather than rely heavily from outside. So th that is uh, one of the ways in which we want to, to also educate people on what is counterfeiting and how is counterfeiting affecting our country in general. Okay. Uh, at the same time, we want also to uh, look at how we can add value in terms of uh, IP asset and valuation. And most of the Kenyans maybe we might not know that IP is an uh, intangible property mm -hmm. that can be utilized properly and it can be a collateral in terms of uh, you also getting a platform of uh, selling uh, the IP asset as a property, you can be able to uh, harness it and uh, utilize it in terms of getting value of that asset. Okay. So I think okay. the, the symposium is having a, a very large spectrum All in right. terms of what we want to deal with and how we want, to, how we want the public to conceive the authority in terms of not only uh, enforcement, but we have got so many ways of dealing with counterfeit mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that the public partner with us and also join the fight of counterfeiting. Well noted. Uh, the dates, it's next week on the? On 13th to 15th to the 15th. of June, yes. Okay, yes. well noted. Thank you so much, yes. Usman Yusuf, who is the Director of the Enforcement Services at the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, just sparing time out of his busy schedule, breaking down what exactly um, is the progress in terms of the anti-counterfeit uh, fight right here in the country, all to do with IP rights as well. And be uh, sure to, you know, follow up on that particular symposium that's happening next week from the 13th 
to the 15th of June, all to do with, you know, celebrating the steps taken 